Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Gay from Scratch, and today we're going to talk about Godot Rust. Now what is Godot Rust? Well this is a project that enables you to use Godot with the Rust programming language. Yep, there's actually two versions of this, uh, one that used GD Native, which was for Godot 3, as well as one now that uses GD Extensions, which is Godot 4. And what we're going to do is talk about how to get up and running with this, and what it allows you to do is basically, again, program or extend the Godot game using Rust programming language. So Rust is an alternative to GDScript with different trade-offs for users. Uh, while GDScript enables fast prototyping and short feedback cycles, games of larger scale may benefit from a stronger type system, a rich library ecosystem, and native performance. The Rust bindings focus on safety despite interacting with other engines over FFI. Many APIs are designed to catch errors at compile time, while others offer runtime checks to prevent undefined behaviors. Again, there is a GD native version of this for Godot 3, and the GD extension version of this for Godot 4. Now, one thing you might be wondering is, what the heck is an FFI? Well, FFI is a foreign function interface. Basically, uh, it is a way for um, the Rust language to call external APIs, such as the Godot uh, bindings. And on top of that, you may be thinking, huh, We've covered this before, haven't we? And definitely, yes, we have. Uh, back in 2022, I covered the Godot extensions for Godot 4, uh, but there is a reason why I am talking about it today specifically, and that is because earlier in this month, they released the uh, 2.0 version. So yeah, that was the 1.0 version I covered in 2022. So this doesn't develop at uh, lightning speed by any means, uh, but it is an updated version of it. Now, in terms of what's actually improved, uh, a lot of it is um, about like the plumbing and how things work and how the interactions work between uh, Godot and Rust. Uh, and there's a little bit more here as well, things like generating Godot docs from Rust doc and so on. Uh, and as well as the addition of the RPC attribute and some quality of life features as well, and a bunch of performance improvements as well. So there has been a major update, the release 2.0 of Godot, or 0.2, I suppose I should say, of the Godot Rust. So what I'm going to do is quickly show you how to go about and get started with this guy. Now, I'm not going to go into much detail because, quite frankly, I never really s gelled with the Rust programming language. It's not one that I know incredibly well. So instead, I'm going to show you how you can get up and going with this one and decide if this works well for you or not. Now, you're going to notice is I am at their GitHub page. By the way, this is available under the MPL2 license. Uh, you go ahead and grab the repository like so. And now what I'm going to do is open up a command prompt like this guy right here. We will full screen with that. And let's make it so you can actually see what I'm doing. And we're going to go to the temp directory because that's where all things should live. Git clone and then just clone down the repository. And this has got everything you need in it. So GD extension. Not the greatest name for the project, by the way, but that's what they went with. And what we're going to do is go into this examples folder right here. But otherwise, you can see all of the, the Godot-specific stuff, the FFI I was talking about earlier, the bindings, uh, and so on. They're all available here. Uh, but what you're going to want to do is go into the examples folder to get things started. Like so. And you'll notice there's two different examples. We've got Dodge the Creeps, which is uh, a game that's been implemented entirely using Rust uh, on the Rust side of things, and Hot Reload. It's Hot Reload we're actually going to illustrate today because it's the simplest example of exactly how Godot Rust works. So let's go into Hot Reload. And what you're going to notice is there's two directories here. So you've got a Godot folder and a Rust folder. And there's instructions, by the way, there is a complete manual that walks you through how to set up your own project. There's quite a few hoops you've got to run through, to be honest. But you'll notice if we go into the Godot folder, it's a Godot project. So you see here, you've got uh, the Godot scene here. You've got uh, like a main scene, a project, and then the GD extension. The GD extension is important because it tells... Um, where all of the various different Rust dependencies are in this case. And then we've got some test stuff with some scenes and so on in it. So we also have this other folder here, though, this Rust directory. And this one is your Rust project. So this is where all your code is. All your code is in the source, source folder here. So your example here is uh, librs, like so. So what you're going to want to do uh, is in the Rust folder, you're going to first off want to make sure that you have Rust installed. To check if you've got Rust installed, uh, the easiest way to do it, well, try and run the command cargo. If cargo doesn't run, you don't have Rust installed. By the way, if you do have it and you haven't used Rust in a while, what you're going to want to do is a cargo followed by the word update, just to make sure that your tool chain is the most current as possible. It updates quite often. So there you see, I have updated my project. Now, what you're going to notice here is there is this cargo.toml file in here, and you can use that to build your project. So what I'm going to just do is say cargo built. And this runs 
and basically compiles my Rust source code. It pulls down all of the relevant dependencies that this project might have. This is basically the build process from the Rust side of things. So we've actually uh, compiled our code and we're good to go. So now I'm gonna do Control Shift 2, just opening up basically another command prompt. So you notice here, tab, we got the two command prompts going. That's all I've done there. So that's Control Shift 2 to do that. And of course we go back to our temp directory, GD extension like so. And I'm gonna go into the examples, and this is, uh, what the heck was, actually, it's called Hot Reload. All right, Hot Reload, we'll go to the Godot project right here. So there's your Godot. You're gonna to wanna to open this one up in Godot. Uh, I have Godot in my system path, so I can go ahead like this, and we can go Godot project.godot. So all we're doing here is opening it up in Godot. You could also have just loaded Godot, file, browse to this directory, and had the same result. All right, so what you're gonna notice here is we have this, um, main scene so we'll open up main scene and then we have reloadable so how the heck is this working well let's head back over here and we'll switch over to our other tab like so so we're still in the rust and we'll just do visual studio code and we'll open up this directory all right so you're going to notice here is our source code is here in source and it's this guy right here so what we've done is we've defined a class in rust programming called reloadable so the structure is available here it's inheriting from inode. Um, so again, there's bindings for all of the various different uh, Godot um, classes and names, etc., out there. And basically what you've done is just created this very, very simple class and it's exposing this enum over here. So uh, this is how you would create your own extended class, but you could use it on the Rust side of things. Notice here you have this full namespace Godot up here. Uh, so we've created this class called reloadable. And then that is linked through the project, again, using that GD extension side of things. So we've created an instance of re reloadable. So you see here, reloadable is available as a node like so. So that is how you would extend your code. And basically you could write new classes in Rust that you could then implement inside of the engine, or you could like interface with a GD script if you wanted or whatever. And you'll notice with this guy selected, we have this favorite planet. So we got Earth, Mars, Venus, and so on. So why is this example called Hot Reload? Well, it's because of this. So what we can do here is come on down here and we will add a new planet to the list, Bob, like so. And go ahead, we'll save our code. Uh, we'll go back to our command prompt over here, uh, right here. And now we just go cargo build because we did an update of our code. It's gonna notice that one file changed. It will rebuild it. And then I'm gonna head back on over here to the Godot game engine, and you'll notice reloadable over here, Bob. So it gives you the ability basically to uh, write your game logic in uh, the Rust programming language, but you can then uh, obviously have live reloading of it inside of the Godot game engine. That's uh, one of the features that has been added, I think in 0 0.2. I don't think that was there all along. By the way, if you are interested, uh, you can also come back over here. So cd dot dot, cd dot dot, we have that dodge the creeps. And you're gonna notice here in the Rust side of things, uh, we have a more in-depth example. So here you can see, boom, and this is more like creating, here's the bindings for a main scene. And you got game over, new game callbacks and so on. So this is a more complicated game, um, full example uh, here again is your player logic here. Uh, so a bit more of an in-depth example than the hot reload one. It's also more complicated to actually grok what's going on here. It's why I went with the other example. So ladies and gentlemen, that is it. Uh, let me just go on back over to the web page, which would be over here. So again, it is available up on GitHub. What you're interested in, it is called Godot Rust. It's available at godotrust.github.io. Again, there is a book to get you up and going uh, that walks you through all of the instructions that you need to know more. Obviously, you need to have something that I don't have right now, which is competency in the Rust programming language. But if you've always wanted to do your game logic in Rust, you can. Now, you're not going to be doing it like this. I showed you a C++ extension a while ago. This doesn't integrate directly inside of the editor. So you don't write your code inside of Godot like you would with GD script or C sharp, etc. It's kind of a, an extensions mechanism for bringing Rust to Godot. So let me know what you think. Comments down below. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.